that I'm not sure who to go with, and I'm just trying to figure that out. If you could help me by just kind of sharing. Am I doing this right? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, buddy. It's all right, buddy. <laughs> I am a professional speaker. I, I assure you, it's been about two years, but I am okay. So, focus, Brian. Focus. All right. So. Hey, before you start the podcast episode, I just want to lay out a couple terms and conditions that you're going to have to follow in order to watch this show. The first one is go ahead and follow so you never miss another episode of the podcast ever again. The second one is share this episode with a friend who might find value in what I said or what a guest spoke about. And the third one is go ahead, if you haven't already, write a review for the podcast. It's one of the only ways that this podcast gets shown to other people and we get to grow the show organically. And without further ado, let's get you into the next episode of Not Another Podcast. I hope you enjoy. Sure. No problem at all, man. I appreciate you helping me in DC. <laughs> Impromptu, no planning, no preparation, but you killed it. Literally, I think my we dream. did has been to role play, bro. Like literally I've been watching a lot of, I don't know if you're familiar with the future. It's a YouTube channel. They put out a lot of content based on uh, uh, business and creative development and, and, um, and business development. And one of the things that they do, one of my favorite things that they do is the role play where they like give situations and they say, this is how you talk to clients, which is what everybody does. But then they actually take some of their pro like students and stuff and they do the role plays and i'm like man i don't want to do that so as soon as you really to the audience i was like <laughs> <laughs> those are always the best people though the people who actually like reach for the mic raise their hand i'm like okay this is going to be good and that's why i don't i typically i hardly ever call on people because now i'm pushing the mic in their hand but the people, the extroverts are the one who says, hey, I don't mind getting on stage and doing my thing. But but the what what happened that day was just phenomenal. That was the all time best. It was almost like we had met in the hallway the night before, rehearsed the banter, the back and forth. And it, it just it was natural, though, as you know, it was all all good. So I'm happy to return the favor. That's my point. <laughs> Bro, it was crazy, especially when we had to go back and forth twice about the photography. <laughs> no, um. That was, that, that was, was definitely cool. a funny highlight. And I think, I think uh, somebody in the audience got me a video recording of that too. So I can send that over to you afterwards. So oh, cool, you know, man. Cool. Recorded. I was having a birthday and then I'm going to be speaking at a conference in two weeks. I need your help with it all. Fair? Okay. All right, cool. So you're, I'm, I'm the photographer. You're the client and we're on a Zoom call I'm trying to set it up. Cool. Shay is the name or Che? Che. Hard che. Time. Cool. Che. Hey, Shay, great to connect on Zoom, man. I know we're trying to connect. Glad our schedule's finally aligned. <laughs> yeah, it's been wild, man. A wild two weeks for me. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Hey, I was just, I'm talking to a few photographers. I'm just trying to figure out, you know, how, how which one to go with. I'm not really sure. Thank you. The microphone's coming for you, Shay. Help me out. Much sure, appreciated. Shay, can you mind, would you mind walking up to the stage as you're talking? Because you look like you can handle that. Sure thing. <laughs> Are you the photographer or am I? I'm the photographer. You're, you're the, the photographer. So now you're asking me about which photographer to go to? Since you're no, the I'm, I'm letting you know that I'm, I'm talking to several photographers and I'm not sure who to go with and I'm just trying to figure that out. If you could help me by just kind of sharing. Am I doing this right? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, buddy. It's all right, buddy. <laughs> I am a professional speaker. I, I assure you. It's been about two years, but I am, okay, so, focus, Brian, focus. All right, so, I am the father. <laughs> you are the parent. Perfect. Awesome, let's do it. So, uh, hey, I understand you're looking to find a photographer. Yeah, absolutely. I uh, got a couple kids coming up. One of them is just about to graduate, so we were looking for somebody to do their senior photos uh, for their high school graduation uh, in, uh, upcoming in April. Okay, cool, very cool. Listen, I'm pretty sure you guys want to make sure it's going to be, uh, you know, it's, everything's going to be done right. You have some cool pics to look at. That's a very, first of all, congratulations. Very important moment. Mm -hmm. um, Thank my you. kids are graduating as well, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, is there anything in particular you were looking for in your photography? So, in the photographer, I mean, obviously, we want like a fun experience, go out, have some fun. Um, obviously, we want some professional pictures, but mostly we just want to go out, have some fun, and have something to put on some cards to send out, as well as we need a couple headshots for 
the school to put in the yearbook as well as on their slideshow. Okay, awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Check this out. Um, I can totally see how if we were to connect and move forward, how we can create a very cool experience and have a lot of fun in the process. Sorry, I'm right? gonna call. Hold on. Oh, awesome. <laughs> All right, sorry, I just put that on mute. All right. All right, cool. Thank you for that. Um, so, with that said, you know, I think we create a, a great experience and have a lot of fun. That was a great ad lib, by the way. Um, have a lot of fun in the process, create some great memories, um, get those uploaded. You know, I've had a lot of experience creating great memory, and I want to kind of connect with you because I think it's important for the client to have a great relationship uh, with the photographer as well, because that way you're more open to share things with me. Yeah, Wait, absolutely. Any thoughts on that? Um, I guess I, I would I would more so be interested to hear about like some of your past experiences as well as your pricing sheets. What do you look at as far as timing for the session, costs associated, and okay. uh, some of your previous experiences with clients? Excellent. I have a website. You can go check out picture one, two, three, four. My prices are ABC. Da 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 da. All right. That's the relationship building. Wants to have a great time, wants to connect, wants to understand what you're going through so you can ask questions, all that stuff. Now, stop, rewind, redo, this time as the opposer, right? Ready, go. Hey, Jay, great to see you, man. I know we had a hard time connecting. Finally, we finally got a chance to connect. Yeah, right. I'm really, really happy that uh, it worked out. Had a crazy few weeks with a bunch of meetings, but uh, we're here. Absolutely. So, listen, I understand you're looking at a lot of photographers. and You have a graduation coming up. Uh, I just want to hear more about what you're looking for, see if I can help. Yeah, so we're looking to go out, have some fun, take some pictures, and get some photos to give to the school for the yearbooks, as well as have some stuff to put on cards, and obviously for my son to be able to blast out onto his social medias and tell everybody that he's going out into the crazy world that we live in to possibly follow in my footsteps. Awesome. Very cool. <laughs> all right. Sounds great. So let me ask you a question. Of all the things that you listed, which one would be the most important to you? Of all of the... Things that are listed as far as like what, what we're looking for to get. Exactly. exactly. Really, we're just. Uh, Which would be the, the highest priority for you? The highest priority for me. I don't know. That's a good question. Let me think on that for just a second. Let me. Let me. Let me. It would be great to have the headshots, the nice outdoor, outdoor kind of like I don't know. We were thinking beachy, but obviously you're a professional. We'd like to get your opinion on that. Um, headshots for the cards and the yearbook and then I don't know my son's not super photogenic so it's gonna be a little bit of a hard time but I'm sure you, you, you know you've got your thing going um, so we'll see you know how that goes but I, I would say the, uh, the school photos and the headshots for that so the school photos and the headshots would be the highest priority okay in order for that to happen I'd have to get a better understanding of your son's personality, uh, you have a son or daughter, but personality, because they're going to show up more naturally if they're in an environment that they want to be in. So if you like the beach, but they don't, that might show on their face and you might not get the results you're looking for. Okay. And I'm not sure what that is. So I first have to get a better understanding of their personality and what their desires are. So you get the outcome you're looking for, which is a great experience and the great photos. Yeah. Anyone feel the difference? Uh, um, Nah, man, so just for the sake of like the content and stuff, I guess just say like your name and what you do and what your company is called and the general genre of work that you're involved in. All right, so my name is Brian Williams. I am founder of Perspectivity, which is a training and consulting company based here out of Dallas, Texas. Spent 20 years in corporate America, most of that in Silicon Valley. Noticed that superior products were being outsold by inferior products, which deeply concerned me. And I realized we were spending all of our time on engineering and R&D. Our competitors were spending their time on the sales pitch, the sales presentation, and connecting with people. And come to find out, that's where the money was being made. Because the, the, the buyer meets a human first before they ever get to know the deep, the, you know, the depths of the technology. And we were starting at the depths of the technology thinking that would win the day. But it's really connecting with people, understanding people, which a lot of our what my company does today is really dealing with the psychology of how adults make buy-in decisions or buying decisions and the science of how adults learn. So we've kind of hacked the market in a sense or biohacked the training industry by saying, hey, 
how do adults learn? How do they process information? How do they retain information? And then we basically morphed all of what we do and how we do it to fit that paradigm. And then the people go, hey, I understand that. I can apply that. I get that. It's almost like magic, but all we really did was read like three or four books on how the brain works, how does learning work. And then we basically went back and redesigned everything we do based on that premise. That was a brilliant summary of everything that you do because I had a couple questions and you literally just kept on answering them. Just, <laughs> just absolutely bulldozing through. That's incredible. Um, how do you take what you, so you say that you have kind of figured out how to connect with people and figure out how to best influence their decision to make a buy-in or buy-in decision how do you take your knowledge of that and actually apply it to companies that aren't just your own or your own respective clients? Like, what do you do for people? Because I know that you're in a service-based industry where you work with clients, like, um, forget, forgive me if I'm wrong, but it's like, you have Nike, you have Amazon, you have a couple other um, fairly notable names under your belt. So what exactly do you do between the research and the notability of the research that you've done to actually put it into execution for the different clients that come your way? And do you attract them or do you go to them? So good question. Um, we used to take a deep dive into uh, the books that we read and how we do what we do and had these brain scans and charts and it was just, it wasn't working right. They, they were asking lots of questions and brain science questions and psychology and I was like this is not what and it was they were it's really interesting and it's intriguing and so we were spending a little bit too much time there so I took all of that out now I just show them the cover of the books and I mentioned quick mention on the book what we learned go to the next one right and we're out so however they completely benefit from everything that was well a lot of what was in those books because we modify everything that we do based on what we learned in the book. So although they may not ha have a deep understanding of what the books teach, they are a massive beneficiary of what the books teach. So in short, let's say, for example, um, we use a lot. We, we took all of our content and transformed it into infographics. So we used to have, a let's say, a, on one service we offer, it was a 50 page workbook. That 50 page workbook is now a six page infographic. There's very little text, pictures, diagrams, right? Concepts, because that's what sticks to the brain. The brain grabs these big concepts quickly. And then we move right into exercise. Why do we move into exercise? We have an information application protocol. We share information in an infographic format. And then we move right into application because that's how humans learn by doing. I'm sure when you learn to ride a bike, your parents had you watch bike riding PowerPoint presentation, right? Nobody does that, <laughs> right? But that's what happens when we learn a new skill. We get pounded with PowerPoint slides and we think hum humans don't learn in that way. You get on the bike, you go to the driveway, fall down, get up, fall down, get up. Three weeks later, you're doing wheelies down the street with your friends, right? We're going to do the same thing. We're going to put you on the bike. You're going to fall down. We're going to help you up get you back on, right? And you'll get the confidence to do it on your own, information application. And we just repeat that process, share new information, and then we move right into application. Now that you've just learned this, let's put it into practice, which most people want to do. They do not want to sit and just go through slide after slide, text on screen, yep. reading, okay. right? No one wants that. We all have. In fact, when I was in corporate America, I would literally be sitting in some of these trainings going, that's got to be a better way. Like <laughs> we spent a ton of money. And then three months later, no one even recalls the name of the class, right? Not that we're using anything that was taught in there. Or we don't even remember the name of it because it wasn't presented in a way that humans learn, right? And so we, where I think a lot of companies may, you know, spend a lot of time on content, training, distribution of content, we spent the overwhelming majority of our time at the very beginning saying, okay, time out. There's got to be a better way. How do people learn? How does this thing called the brain retain, absorb information? And how do we make them? Uh, we, our thing is you will continue to understand it and execute it long after we're gone. Like if we can't do that, we failed you as a training and consulting company, right? Yeah. You should be able to do this without us being there. 
and you should be able to execute it at a high level without us having to hold your hand. Now, it's going to take us weeks and months to build that skill inside the organization. But once it's done, it is literally time for us to fire ourselves. Otherwise, our our uh, our methods aren't effective. So are you consulting and training the sales departments, marketing departments, content creation departments, outreach? Like what, what type of departments of major corporations are you hitting like exactly? And then to follow that up so that we can get a nice flow going, how long did it take you from like the time that you started conceptualizing per perspectivity to then changing everything from the bullet points that you talked about and then where you're at now? What was the timeline look like? And then what, who are you targeting within corporations? Okay, so we target it's going to either be sales, the sales organization, the sales team, or it's going to be, in some cases, there are new hires that just came into the company and the, the company wants to get them some important skills right away. Otherwise, we're going to be working with lots of senior leaders, mid-level managers. When we work with senior executives, those are usually going to be one-on-one -on -one executive coaching sessions. Um, the senior leaders, mid-level managers, we're going to be working with team sizes of eight to 15 at a time. Now, the department could be two, 300 people, but we're going to work in sizes of eight to 15. And that's why we have a team that we can deliver multiple sessions on the same day at the same time. But again, humans typically don't learn very well in really large groups, right? We break the groups down eight to 15, and we really try to talk them down from 15, around 13 or so, because we wanna give everyone a lot of time and attention, give them opportunity to ask many, as many questions as they can. Uh, and so that's what that looks like. Now, from a time perspective, you know, I, I'll put it this way. So I, I was asked to speak at this, uh, was it elementary, no, middle school. And my, my son was at the school, hey, can you come in speak, this is a few years ago. I go in and talk, and one of these kids asked the question you asked. And they said, Mr. Williams, like, you know, how, how did you do it? How long did it take? What did it look like? Because they're in middle school, like, they're trying to think, like, how do we get there? So I, I started explaining to this kid, okay, went to college, computer science degree, Silicon Valley, da da da, da da da, boom, I'm here. And this kid, I don't know how old this kid was, he says, really? So was it really that straight, that smooth, that logical, just one point to the next and you just got there? And I was like, listen to this dude, man. Nope. <laughs> and I backed up my truck and went, you know what? It, it wasn't like that at all. And I told them, because I had drew this line, I was, the whiteboard was behind me and I was drawing these little dots on the whiteboard and I was connecting these dots. And so he could visually see the smooth transition. And so I then began to explain what really happened. Okay, I thought I was going to do this and I've dropped the line down and then moved the line back and all this craziness was happening. And then I got to this point. Right. So, you know, as you already know, it's not as quick and clean as people say sometimes. So, in fact, when I left corporate, I partnered with a guy. And man, it got crazy really quickly, as a lot of partnerships do. That partnership burned and fizzled, fizz, fizzled out. It got really ugly at the end. Um, and, uh, I learned a lot from the process, but, uh, you know, it's always what the wheels were really wobbly in the beginning, right? They were very wobbly. And when you got wobbly wheels, the engine has the capacity to do 80 miles an hour. But if you do guess what, the car just shakes even more intensely, right? So you don't want to go that fast. And that's what we found was happening. So I was able to break into some accounts because I spent a lot of years in corporate I had a few people that I knew in corporate gave us a chance. And, you know, thankfully we began making a name for ourselves and people start talking to other people. They saw it was different. They saw the approach was, was actually working. And we actually asked some clients recently, we were trying to get a better understanding of why they hire us. And the feedback we got overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly was, when you guys come in, Perspectivity does an incredible job of doing a deep dive analysis on the front end on understanding who we are and what our problems are. And then you guys go and you create a customized solution that actually meets our needs. And we heard that second, third, fourth time or we went bingo. And we, we had been doing that 
but we we weren't articulating it in that way. That was just our process. But when they when they fed it back to us, we said to ourselves, okay, we need to be a lot more intentional about communicating that to other people. That that is our secret sauce, right? How and we we now call it the X ray process. We come in and take an X ray before we ever proceed to doing a surgery because you can actually there there. Uh, medical malpractice is a huge problem in our country because they're not doing a deep dive analysis on the front end. They misdiagnose, they mistreat, and then bad things happen. And we don't want to do the same. That's freaking awesome. <laughs> well done, like finding all that and, and, and figuring that out and applying it. Um, sure. The adaptability that you're showcasing in your business is something that is on one end, it seems like everybody's trying to say like, yo, be adaptable, you know, see what the client wants, see what happened, see what's happening around you and change. And yet when you actually look at it, no one, I mean, it's the saying, be the change you want to see, but no one's, no one's doing that. It's just interesting to watch that, that the fact that like you're actually applying it and it's something that for some reason is unique, even though it shouldn't be. <laughs> Moving away from the like services you provide, your backstory and the business operations, what like going kind of more into like your day to day operations as the founder um, and with your due responsibilities, what does your first and last hour of your day look like? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, I would say so the first hour I actually have this this app called morning routine, I think it's called. And I put in all the things that it has a timer. So you put the things you want to do it has a timer on it. And you just hit start and it just kind of walks you through your morning routine because I was having a hard time with doing the, the morning routine consistently. And so this app just kind of literally just, I mean, it's the coolest thing, man. It just kind of walks you through what, what that looks like. So it starts with read, uh, I'll either read the Bible or watch some kind of sermon, Bible teaching, whatever. So it's a 20 minute timer. And then when that's done, the timer pops, it goes to the next thing. Which, which you probably heard it say pray yeah, and there's meditation so. right and then there's affirmation and visualizations that i do so all these things just progress and that takes exactly an hour so that's the first hour oh, awesome. of the day um and the last hour i don't know if my last hour is quite as structured um i you one thing that i have learned and it may not be the last hour of the day but i will say i i try to make my last hour of the day around 5 five thirty. That what I, I will say. I know you hear a lot about entrepreneurs rise and grind and you know keep man. I just right. don't buy into that nonsense. Um, not anymore. Let me say that. I don't buy into it anymore. One thing I've learned recently from a friend of mine who's a business owner who his mentor is a billionaire and my business coach, uh, his mentor happens to be a billionaire. And in both cases, both of these billionaires say, they spend maybe two hours per day just thinking, just thinking like the freedom and the time and the space to just think, to, to access the most powerful resource all of us have, the brain and thoughts, right? And so I've been trying to incorporate that more and more. In fact, when you were texting with me, I was just out on a walk, just walking, nice. thinking, right? Processing. Um, and so that's been a huge help to me because you can get sucked in so quickly, all these phones and gadgets and meetings and Zoom, right? And you just get caught up in the whirlwind. And at some point, you got to press pause, rise above the noise and say, okay, like a drone level view, like where are we going? What's on the horizon? Is that a pothole we see ahead? Maybe we should dip left to avoid it, right? I think those kind of decisions are made when you give yourself the time and space to pause and just think and process, whether it's at the end of the day or in the middle of the day, just really creating that time. In fact, I was just telling my assistant uh, and she was kind of asking me uh, questions about it. I said, no more meetings on Friday. Like, what do you mean? No, like none, like zero, <laughs> like no meetings on Friday. And then something came up, Brian, there's this situation we need to talk about. I said, I no, no more. You have to be diligent and fight for your time again, right? I was doing a project with, uh, Google. I don't know if this department still does it, but at the time we ran out of time in the meeting. We said, let's meet tomorrow. They said, we can't meet tomorrow. I was like, are you guys overbooked? They said, actually, no, we don't meet on Thursdays. I mean, what do you mean you don't meet on Thursdays? Okay. Like we literally have no meetings on Thursday. We need time to think, work, 
get other things done. Wow. And it keeps our schedules from being too congested. And I had never heard. Now, I don't know if that was a company wide thing or just that department, but they made it very clear that they are not wow. meeting with us tomorrow. And it was an important project we were working on. And we ran late. And we just thought we would continue or resume tomorrow. But that's what we did at my company at the time when I was in corporate. But this large corporation said, uh, we're not running over, time's up, and we're not meeting tomorrow. But what was interesting with that, they forced us to respect time because we never ran late after that. We stayed focused and on target every time we met with them. And we were more productive as a result. Another thing I learned uh, from them was they no matter what's happening in the meeting, they get the person on the phone right away, call, text, hey, what's the update, what's the status? They don't like creating a lot of action items during the meeting because you're just creating more work for yourself. It's like, no, 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 let's just stop where we are now, get them on the phone, speakerphone now, let's do it, boom. And it was so cool to just see how much more effective they were with this approach. Um, that's adding a little more than the first and last hour, but I just thought that's I okay. No, hey, learn from your clients, man. Learn from your clients. That's <laughs> that's incredible. Yeah, for I, sure. I, really I, like, I mean, we've adopted it also. Go ahead. I love I love the concept of like no meetings on a certain day to be able to prioritize like tasks, to be able to prioritize productivity, to be able to prioritize the mind. I like that concept. Two more mm -hmm. questions should only say if we take up a couple minutes. So similar yet different. What gives you fulfillment in your career? You obviously meet with companies, you, you train their people, you, um, you know, you just work with these different people. What gives you fulfillment in your daily life on a professional aspect, on a professional front? I would say human transformation, right? Seeing a sales team underperform and now they're overperforming, seeing a group struggle with communication, presentation, change management, whatever service we're working with them on. And to see, like, Brian, I can't believe how much more effective, product, whatever that adjective is, I, I just love transformation. That's why I don't do it anymore, but I used to love doing my yard. I just like to see it, you know, brown and weeds and torn up to, like, I mean, we, the, my highlight was we won this like yard of the month or yard of the year, whatever it was, award. And that was the coolest thing because I knew what our yard looked like when we first got here. It was an absolute mess. Um, and so I think I just like transformation. I like seeing things broken, dis, you know, disorganized, whatever, and just seeing that because that take is hard work. The hardest transformation you will ever encounter is not a yard, that's easy it's adult human beings, right? Mm -hmm. The hardest transformation. And so I like a challenge. And one of the biggest challenges is seeing adult humans change and transform. And there's a huge, I just get huge satisfaction out of that, especially if we get to have fun along the way. That's incredible. I like that. It is, it is really, really hard. You know, it's can't teach an old dog new tricks type deal, but you guys are able to do it on the daily. Absolutely. Last thing. This is this can this answer doesn't matter where it is professional personal very broad might take a second what are you grateful for Oh man that's a good one you don't get that one often um <laughs> you know This is an interesting question and I'm going to I'm going to give you more some additional insight so one of the things in the morning meditation is three things to be grateful for so when you ask what am i most grateful for so this journal right here i have 24 pages of just each page has what three like 15 to 18 things that i'm grateful for so there's a lot of things Man. i'm obviously grateful for and i try to mix it up and bury them you know yeah. and so so i try to live a life of gratitude that's the reason why i bring that up now, if I were to land the plane on one, I'd have to say have to. that makes the most, you that's true. That's, that's a good point. I choose to say that uh, it would be my relationship with God, my, because that trumps everything else, meaning it gives purpose to what I do is how I show up. It's why I'm the type of husband that I am, father that I am. It's all shaped through that paradigm. And honestly, man, I and, and here's the thing. I remember living my life 
without that insight, without God's perspective, without an understanding of the Bible. And I know what my life was like. And then you go through this transformation and trust my life to him, learn from him, read how he says I should live my life. And I see the results. Not that every problem gets eliminated, but it is definitely a much more fruitful, peaceful life. And I would have to say that impacts everything that I am and do. And so, although I hadn't thought about that question, that would be the answer. It may sound a little cliche to some, but it is my truth. That's awesome, man. Thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I enjoyed this. You yeah, asked some really fun, some different questions. I like you. Some questions, I just have this rapid response. Today, I was more like, wow. Okay, let me see. I didn't think about I could tell. It. Which is those tell, are the best. I could tell for the first the first few questions when I was like, who are you? What do you do? What's your process like? Who do you talk with? How do you talk with them? What's your process? Da 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 da. There was a very clear like mental switch when I started asking the, the more <laughs> weird like first and last hour. You know that first and last hour. I, the reason it's actually not in the um the Calendly thing is because I heard that on a podcast probably three days ago. Somebody asked it on hmm. a podcast, and I was like. Dude, <laughs> I was like, that's, <laughs> that's, that's a good question. That, that makes yeah. Sense. Sure. Anyway, I just thought that was good. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that episode of Not Another Podcast. Just like I said in the beginning, I would greatly appreciate it if you would go write us a review, follow the podcast so you never miss another episode, and share this with one friend who might find value in what I or a guest said during the show. Rob Dial always says, make it your mission to make somebody else's day better. And that quote ever since I started listening to his podcast has really changed my thinking as far as how I go about my daily life. So with that being said, I'm going to leave you the way that Rob Dial leaves you every single episode. Make it your mission to make somebody else's day better, and I hope that you guys have an amazing day.